Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name's Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Here are today's stories. We've got Russia to triple LNG exports by 2030. Deputy PM is talking about this. We've got Ford cuts prices of 2023 Mustang Mach-E by up to $8,100. Offer 0% financing. Can't give these things away. It's kind of interesting. Let's go to Holtec to get $1.5 billion for a loan to restart Palisades nuclear plant in Michigan. Pretty cool news. I think the uh, folks in Michigan are going to be pretty happy about having that nuclear reactor coming back online. World trade concerns is red shipping slows. Um, it's going to be kind of tough as we keep seeing some more ships sink and uh, more ships avoiding uh, the Red Sea. Why California's climate disclosure law should doom green energy. This is an amazing story as well. Um, it, it's pretty crazy. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started in there. And uh, let's start with Russia to triple LNG exports by 2030. Uh, this is Alexander uh, Novak uh, has uh, said, this is a quote unquote, this is an ambitious task. It's necessary to develop LNG production clusters in order to achieve it. According to Novak, the ballistic uh, Baltic cluster is expected to rise 15 million tons by 2030 from 2.2 million tons in 2023. That is a lot of natural gas and LNG that's being done. That is just unbelievable. The Yamal cluster will be ramped up to 60 million tons from the current 20 million, while the Salkland cluster will reach 15 million tons from the current 11. Here's something that you have to understand. You're about to see the end, in my opinion, the end of the Ukrainian-Russian war. Germany has been deindustrialized. You're about to see that they want cheap energy again. Russia is primed for success. Um, you've got to hand it to them. They have survived past the weaponization of the U.S. dollar. Is Putin right? I'm not going to get into that one. I don't. I, I don't know him. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Uh, he has Russia first. I wish the U.S. had U.S. first. I'll just leave it at that. Let's go to Ford Cuts price of 2023 Mustang Mach-E by up to $8,100. Offers 0% financing. This is a continued story of heartbreak for the EV industry. And uh, I'm pretty well shocked by this. Uh, not. But let's go through some of the key bullet points that came out of this story. Select rear wheel drive drops 3100 to $39,895. Select all wheel drive AWD drops 3100 to 42895. Premium rear wheel drive drops from 4100 to 42895. California Route 1 uh, AWD all wheel drive drops 8,100 to 4895. GT drops six, 7,600 to 52. Um, the battery range on these vehicles is estimated at 250 to 312 miles per charge, depending on the battery pack and other details. The e Mach E does not qualify for the seven thousand five hundred dollar tax credit. This is just mind boggling to me. So that if they're losing sixty thousand dollars, as Ford is losing on every single EV that they put out, 
they can't give these things away at 0% interest and it's going to be 42,000. They're going to lose more money on this. This is, uh, I don't understand why the Biden administration and the motor companies, motor uh, manufacturers don't understand that the U S is not enthralled with this I personally would love a second car as a uh, EV. I would prefer a uh, to have the tax credits go with a hybrid. Hybrids to me make a lot more sense. You guys have heard this on the podcast before. Makes sense to me. Hey, let's jump on to some uh, good news here at uh, Palisades Nuclear Plant in Michigan. Holtec to get 1.5 billion loan to restart. This is really exciting. I am happy for uh, the Lake Michigan in Covert Township. The Palisades nuclear facility is a single unit pressurized water reactor and other associated plant equipment. Uh, it was permanently shut down by Entergy in May of 2022. Um, Holtec International uh, purchased the Palisade plant in uh, a move to safely and timely decommission. However, in 2023, Holtec pulled a fast one and filed for an application with the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory, the NRC, uh, to reauthorization the restart of operations. I think this is a great line in here. Uh, Holtec International <laughs> spokesman Nick Culp uh, has been quoted by Bloomberg as saying this is a horistic, uh, hor a hor historic opportunity for the country in Michigan. I couldn't agree more. As we transition away from fossil fuels, nuclear is going to be more of a critical part, not only reaching our climate goals, but doing a way that ensures the light stays on. My hat's off to them. Great job. I hope it goes through. I'm going to look up the CEO of Holtec. You're more than welcome to hop on the Energy News Beat podcast, uh, and uh, I'd like to talk to you about nuclear and see what your thoughts are. Let's hop over here to the World trade concerns is red, red Sea shipping slows. The Maersk container ship sound, found itself at the epicenter of a sea-based attack from four Houthi boats on Sunday, December 31st. This was the first one that they had uh, in there. Since then, uh, there has been another uh, cargo uh, ship that has sunk. We have Marisk, we have others, we have BP, we have all the other LNG carriers are avoiding that area uh, heavily. There were oil uh, tankers that were going through. However, most of those were either Russian or um, other Arab countries that were going through. So here's what the problem is is that all of that extra time is now adding weeks three weeks or ballpark could be longer on uh, shipping routes those longer shipping routes get passed on as increased costs to the manufacturers or the goods being delivered and it is the consumers that are going to be paying the higher price so this is going to be Red Sea inflation. You've heard that term here first. I haven't heard it anywhere else, but Red Sea inflation uh, by the hooties and the blowfish. This is going to be a big deal. It's going to have a clear impact on world prices. So um, you got to just keep watching it and escalation. Our hearts and prayers go out to everybody that's out in that area. And we hope that no escalations happen or increase. Last article for today is why California's climate disclosure law should doom green energy. I'll tell you what, this is a quite honestly a despicable uh, law that they are putting in. California uh, is putting in uh, this 
uh, to lower the state's carbon uh, footprint, the legislator passed a law requiring all companies over one billion in business within California to publicly disclose by 2026 all their direct greenhouse gas emissions stemming from fuel combustion they utilize, as well as indirect greenhouse gas emissions derived from the electricity, heating, or cooling they consume. Holy smokes. This is such a cost increase that this is absolutely going to be miserable for companies. They're going to pass this on to the consumers or they're not going to do business in California and California stands to lose major products. You won't be able to buy a lot of products in California. Let me uh, also go here. Since zero emission vehicles can be sold in California uh, after 2035, the state must have 100% clean energy by 2045. That's not going to happen. I, I hate to warn anybody, but you only have 10% at Diablo Canyon by 2045, and Diablo Canyon is going to be past its second uh, extension. So you have 10% right off the top then you have wind and solar are not capable of keeping the grid alive. You have all the refined products uh, being, that are, in my opinion, going to be bought from China. China uh, has, in my opinion, cut deals, and uh, they are going to uh, buy refined products from China as opposed to making it in the U.S., with better ESG and less impact on the environment than buying from China, but they would rather buy from China and have a, um, a feel good moment rather than understanding that they are hypocritically impacting the environment. So I, for one, would like to have the lowest kilowatt per hour delivered to all people of the planet with the least amount of impact on the environment. And in order to do that, this law does not impact wind or solar, but yet they have even worse impact uh, than does oil and gas and natural gas. How much natural gas, excuse me, how much diesel does it take to mine everything for an EV? How much um, does it take in order to get the cobalt, the carbon, everything else, um, uh, copper? It, none of that is going to be calculated. How much is it going to cost when a wind farm only lasts eight years? And if you're a wind expert and you would like to visit with me on my podcast, please come out. I want to visit with you. I have not found anyone that has refuted those timelines. Wind farms are not fiscally responsible from day one without tax subsidies. They then start failing on an overwhelming uh, note at the eight-year mark. And uh, like the Inflation Reduction Act, David Blackman has brought out the big point that you are now able to get those that extra funding if you update these things at the end of when they're ready to be updated at eight years when the tax subsidies run out. So now the consumer gets to pay for these things twice and it is not doing the environment any good because they are not recyclable. So if we can get wind and solar in a recyclable, technologically friendly way without printing money, I am all in. Please understand I'm energy agnostic, but natural gas, nuclear, uh, you can't make a iPhone out of uh, a windmill. You can't do it. You cannot make an iPhone out of solar. So I want to talk physics fiscal responsibility and humanity in a positive way with that subscribe like share hug your friends hug your neighbors uh, pass this along and we just appreciate 
all of the wonderful people that are giving us wonderful reviews that the feedback that we are getting michael tanner is hitting it out of the park and i mean we are growing like you guys wouldn't believe so with that buckle up and have an absolutely wonderful day have a great one